Hey again, and welcome back to my 74HC Logic Chip series sponsored by PCBWay. Today's video is on the 74HC04, and I just want to remind you that every single thing that we are going to be doing today can be done on a breadboard and using jumper wires, but I find that these uh, custom made PCBs I made make everything a little bit clearer, a little bit easier to follow, and a lot neater. Let's get started. So the 74HC04 is actually one of the simpler logic chips in this series. It is simply a hex, as in there are six of them, inverter. So whatever you feed into A uh, will be inverted at Y. So for example, you put a high on one A, well on one Y you'll get a low. You put a low on one A, on one Y you get a high. It's that simple. It takes whatever the input is and flips it. And you have six totally independent gates to do that with. And just to show off how simple it is, here's your function table or your truth table. Sometimes you learn it like that. A and Y are in these columns. If A is high, Y is low. If A is low, Y is high. It's just that simple. And if you look over on the board here, all of the inputs and outputs are written down on the silk. The function table is there. You have capability of pulling up or pulling down the input or leaving it neutral if you either take this jumper out or put it in the middle setting. And then you have your outputs here so you can see where they land. And at the same time, you have a couple pin headers so you could, you know, interface with the output. As for the maximum ratings, pretty much the same. Um, ground to about 7 volts that it operates at. Um, but these are absolute maximum, so you probably don't want to go much above 6 volts. All of my testing today will be done at 5 volts. I find that it's just so common with Arduinos to use 5 volt logic. And don't expect in or out more than 20 milliamps of current. Uh, this is not to drive high loads. You can always use this to drive the base or the gate of a transistor or a MOSFET, but you cannot drive high loads directly from it. I mean, you only get about 500 milliwatts of total dissipation. Just like with the other chips, you have to be careful not to leave the inputs floating. So all the inputs in this case are being pulled down to ground through a 10K resistor, which is a feature of the board. We've got pull-ups, pull-downs, and we've got uh, LEDs with their um, limiting resistors. So, if they're all pulled down, what do you think all these LEDs are going to be when I flip this on? I hope you guessed correctly. So yes, it's just really flipping the input from what it is to the opposite. So if I pull this and I put it to pull up, it turns off. So if I can do every second one, The output is just inverted. It's that simple. Let's hook up the input box and have a little bit of fun. I think this might be the first time that my input box is completely maxed out, all six channels, uh, but here it is. So everything is pulled low on the board and everything's being pulled low by these uh, switches. So now I need to uh, push them high and we will see what happens to these LEDs. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And again, if we just flip every second one, there we go. We just get the opposite answer to what our switches are. But I think we can make this more fun. I have now disconnected all of the inputs aside from one A, and I've tied uh, one Y to two A, and then I have tied two Y to 3A and so on. So the output of one stage is inputting into the other stage. And so now we're getting feedback. Remember, you can do this because they're fully independent gates. So now if I swap from high to low, you see we have an alternating pattern. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it would be actually interesting to see how long it takes to propagate uh, the data sheet has a little bit of information on that, but you know, one day I think it'd be fun to uh, line up, you know, maybe 10 of these or more 
and see how long the propagation delay is. And so that's it. If it seemed way too simple, it's because it is that simple. Uh, so I hope you're going to pick up one of these chips, 74HC04. Uh, links to everything, uh, including the PCB design, is in the description. Uh, but feel free to just mock this up on a breadboard. It's lots of fun. It's just a little bit less, you know, clean for me to be able to explain it. So let me know if you're going to try it yourself or if you're going to order some boards, or if you like this series at all. Thanks for watching.